welcome to my uh, unboxing video of the FODSPORT M1S Plus Bluetooth Intercom Unit. It's uh, by FODSPORT, surprisingly enough, and uh, I've looked at a few of the FODSPORT ones over the last couple of years because uh, I've been using these old V6 units that, uh, that have been very good actually. Um, so I've used them with a few of my friends, I've got them and uh, we uh, sort of buddy up and chat with them, just two of us at a time normally when we're travelling around uh, on tours around Europe so, uh, but they've been good but one of the good things about this that I was looking at is that it supports up to eight people talking at a time at the same time and I think uh, six is probably more like the realistic number they recommend and the other option that I've been looking at for that sort of functionality was the uh, Cardo um, well, packed all bold especially, but they're between they're about two hundred and between two hundred and two hundred and fifty pounds in the UK. So that's quite a lot. And when I first mentioned it to my my best mate, who I, who I normally pair up with when we go away, he was like, "I don't want to spend two hundred and fifty quid on that when these sort of thirty five pound units actually do the job pretty pretty well." So. I thought I'd go with this because one of the other things that this does do is it does pair up as well with the uh, older units. So I've got two of these units at the moment. Um, so when I when I go out riding with my girlfriend who's got her own bike, she um, wears what uses one of those. So I'll try and make sure that I bought one, thinking I'll see if this pairs up with the uh, with the older unit. Okay, and if that's the case, then I know I can pair up with my uh, my mate when we go when I go away with him and uh, and then I could buy another one for her and potentially I can uh, push my uh, friends into getting some of these maybe uh, they're nice they're nice looking units so uh, I'll uh, kick off I'll, with a bit of unboxing so as I said uh, this cost about 60 pound in the UK uh, it's got quite a lot of features on it, if I can uh, show you that, if you can see that, okay. It's got good noise reduction apparently with the uh, grouping intercom. It's also got a built in FM radio that I don't currently have on the one I've got now. Anti noise mic, I think the one I've got now has a bit of that. The CVC digital noise reduction function, which hopefully is, is good. Although again, equally the one I've got at the moment is it's not bad. Um, it's got some audio integration, so you can plug it into your phone with a cable. I think uh, I'm not sure why I'd want to use that. I tend not to use it for music much. Uh, I, I do sort of just Bluetooth my old one to the phone and listen to music on there, but it's very rare. Generally, I just use it as a communication device. I don't use the sat nav connected to it or anything like that for my phone. I use a standalone Garmin sat nav. Uh, it's got some music sharing function. If you've got two of these units, you can be listening to a track, press a button, and the other person who's connected to you can hear the same track as you, apparently. It's got a mute microphone button, which I don't know that the uh, other one has. I tend to leave it on all the time anyway. And it says it's got ultra large capacity battery. And these older units, again, they tend to last all day. I mean, when I go out riding, we tend to, if I go on a tour, we tend to sort of set off at sort of 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, and we ride pretty much all day till about, well, 5, 6, 7 p.m. sometimes before we get to where we're going. Do a lot of miles, hard miles in all weathers, and uh, they can be a little bit temperamental if they if it's really heavy rain but generally they last all day. We have had a couple of days where, you know, the, uh, the battery dies on them within about an hour of getting to where we want to be, but they're pretty damn good, really. So here's the unit. comes in a box like this. I shall if I can slide that out. It's quite a nice solid box that it comes in. It comes with a user manual and a quick quick start guide and there's the unit itself in the box 
So we've got polystyrene, push that out. And as I say, it looks a nice unit. It feels feels solid, it feels quite tactile, it's got nice sort of rubberized buttons. It's got the sort of volume buttons on the top, which are nice and big. Another reason I like this unit was because, you know, like using the other one with the gloves, the, the volume button on here, I had to take my gloves off to adjust it. It's these tiny little buttons in the middle there. So to try and even press those without pressing any of the buttons around it is uh, nigh on impossible without gloves. Well, I tend to just stick the volume up and leave it at the right volume, and uh, which is uh, good seems to be okay for me. Um, it's got a little rubberized cover at the bottom that's for the three and three and a half mil jack that is only used for the audio input so I'll try that out at some point when I put a review of it up later when I've used it. It's got two rubber mounts on the back, not mounts, sorry, they're just uh, pads almost like which the mount would slip, sit between those, I guess, to stop you scratching it against your helmet. It's got a USB-C style connector at the back. Something I probably should say is that I read a couple of things about a standard USB-C cable you can't use. So I'm just desperately trying to find a, there's one there, an adapter that's a USB-C and it doesn't go in far enough because of the size of the um, sorry I've got the wrong one there the white plastic bit around there doesn't actually fit in that hole so it goes up to that so you'd have to sort of chisel away to get the USB-C cable in there standard one there is one that comes inside here so uh, and that fits in obviously fine and there's sort of headphones and microphone cable also plugs into there. So a little bit more about what's in the box. I'll uh, just open that box and there's a bag with the microphone and headphones in, uh, another few cables and the mounts and I'll spare you me taking these all out and I'll take them out now. Okay, so uh, I've got all the uh, bits out of the box. Um, I just noticed the USB-C cable that you use for charging it. Uh, that's what I meant about the, uh, the sort of black plastic bits recessed there so that it fits into the hole on the unit. And if you look at that compared to the other one, you'll see that it's got that narrow a bit at the end of the plastic next to the actual plug on the black unit so that it fits into it so not just be warned that you just don't carry a standard one of these USB-C's and expect to be able to charge it with that you'll need to have this one or buy another one that does fit. Uh, the other bits that come with it there's the I spoke about the connecting cable that goes in the bottom of the unit to plug your phone in if you want to listen to music or if you've got an old um, mp3 player ipod touch or something that you're using to play music and without bluetooth then you can use the cable i don't think i'll be using that um, it's got two different mounts there's the uh this is the mount that i've traditionally used on on my helmet that type that slides up inside the uh kate structure of the helmet and clips on the side. I might actually try the uh, stick on one this time. It comes with a couple of two different, two, uh, I guess you've got a spare one for sticking that onto the helmet. Um, there's some other pads here as well that are like Velcro for, I guess these two uh, sort of stick inside the helmet to stick the speakers onto. They're like, they're soft and obviously the back of the speakers have got velcro around them if you can see that so they'll just once that's in the helmet you can just stick that on there and they'll uh, st should stay relatively stable they're quite thick these speakers a um, bit hard to see the thickness of that can you see that next to the unit 
so uh, that'll be interesting I do have a bit of issues with my ears in the helmet with them getting a bit sore I wear glasses and uh, so when they're inside the helmet sometimes they sort of give me a bit of pressure behind the ears so uh, I'll have to fiddle around with that um, the uh, this is the plug that fits into the back of the unit for the so when that's mounted on the helmet all you need to do is to take it off is unplug that and detach it from the mount and this stays on the bike obviously with the uh, speakers and microphone and you can see that again fitting in there's the bit I was talking about that's slightly narrower and you have to push that in so that it fits in snugly I guess it makes it watertight as well which is a good thing the um, the microphone there are two microphones the one that's on the helmet at the, on the sorry on connected to the speakers is the fixed type one like this that it's good for uh, I think I use this in both I've got two helmets I should mention I've got a full face and uh, and a flip helmet I tend to use the flip helmet for commuting and the full face helmet for touring now one of the other things is that I just end up I'll buy two headsets and have one fitted into each of the two helmets so I don't know I, I'm, I did look the other day I can't remember how much it was but I think it was about sort of 20 or 20 pounds for a for a spare uh, headphones and uh, speakers um, which is sort of interesting because like when one of the, like I said I looked at the cardo one and a and an additional headset for that would have cost about, I think it was over £50. So you're getting close to buying for the whole cost of the unit here. So there's a big difference. And if you want to change the microphone, it's it's got a plug here. that You just tiny little plug here, let you undo there. And then the, the microphone is uh, off. And there's another, here's the other cable microphone here which I should probably try out on my full face helmet, stick that on and there's a little velcro pad there. You can stick that microphone inside there, stop it moving around. So I think that's it for the connections. Oh, I should show you how these work. Um, so I don't actually know. Ah, oh, I see. I hadn't realized that this this bit clicks onto the metal base, so it is the same the same part here. You either stick it on the helmet or clip it onto the uh, metal attachment that goes onto the helmet. And then once that's on there, then oops, that will be on the helmet like that. And this just fits in the bottom like that and pushes clicked on the top there. So there's just that spring spring loaded sort of clip to take it off that's all that's holding it on there which uh, does seem a little bit easy to sort of come off but don't know we'll see time will tell